Okay, this is my B team. I am. Um, uh, I have a squad that is uh, six, seven, maybe eight people who are just really fucking good. Really six who are really fucking good, and um, two more who are very good. This guy right here in the middle, Captain Jake Tucker, is the only one of those people who is not currently seriously wounded. <laughs> and so everyone else, including uh, Matt Castle here, um, and uh, Claudia Lowe actually is, uh, does have some rank, um, but everyone else is basically noobs. So Castle, uh, Nika Harper, and Mike Cook, uh, and Phil Savage actually, are all complete noobs. Actually, Phil Savage seems to have a rank. Oh yeah, I think I, I trained him. Um, so none of them have any combat experience. Um, Claudia Lowe actually was one of my earlier squad members and she was one of the ones who got captured when um, we failed to make it out of a mission in time and it turns out you lose your whole squad rather than just retreating, which is what I thought would happen. So, all my main squad are injured and normally that's no problem because they actually recover really quickly. I've put loads of investment in making them recover as quickly as possible so my best people are always in action, they're always leveling up, they're always getting better and better. But uh, just this once, uh, I actually took on a, a sort of main story mission at the same time as an optional council mission was being offered to me. And when I came out of it, all my people were injured and the council mission is about to expire. And I thought that wasn't a big deal, but when it was about to expire, the game follows up a massive like red alert message saying this is, it will have serious consequences if you do not do this mission. So <laughs> I had to ha like very hastily hire three recruits, take my one good guy who's not injured, and put together this kind of ragtag team of kind of nobodies. <laughs> I mean, Jake's not a nobody. Claudia's not. But Claudia has a great like history, but everyone else is brand new, and they like that has a lot of problems. That means they can't hit for shit. They have no abilities. Um, they are going to have incredibly low health, so they can die really, really easily. And basically, every time I've had new recruits in a squad, they've died. <laughs> so, and this is almost all new recruits. So, um, I didn't record the whole thing. I was uh, I haven't been recording all of my XCOM playthroughs because it just takes too much kind of effort and setup and uh, disk space and um, uh, but I've been hitting the highlight button a lot and that's just a, uh, a feature of NVIDIA Shadow Play where it records the last five minutes and this mission turned out to have a lot of highlights so I've got most of it but the part I don't have is the start because nothing really interesting happened uh, which advanced slowly I was terrified because these people are idiots <laughs> tactically is idiots I'm sure they're lovely people um, and we, the first three enemies in Canada were just soldiers, but they had like two to three layers of armor each, and none of these people can shred armor. My other, my A team can shred armor like nobody's business. They got so many ways of doing that. Um, my B team have nothing except explosives, and we only had a couple of explosives for the whole mission. So um, that's what happens in this skip here, and then here is the next fight. So. This is a VIP mission. We've got to get to the VIP and either kill him or extract him. And I'm thinking, this is the B team. We'll be lucky to get out alive. If we get to him at all, we should just kill him and move out. Uh, we've got nine turns to do it, which is it's quite a long time. Um, but it's difficult to sort of escort someone to an evac zone in that time. Um, to sort of get into a place and get out of it as well. Like, if you just have to wipe out the enemies, maybe you can do it in nine turns, but then to also get to a specific location, get everyone there. Anyone who's not there is captured, as Claudia well knows, because it happened to her. So, after encountering his first five soldiers, we run into a bunch of codexes, and these are digital enemies. Oh, I should warn you, um, this will have sort of minor spoilers for something that happens um, in, as part of the main plot, like you're given an optional objective, and in this mission I do the optional objective, and something happens as a result of that that's unexpected. Um, so, three codexes. And codexes, I've never really taken direct damage from them before, I th don't think. They just sort of cast spells on you that disable all your weapons and cause havoc if there's other enemies around. But in this case, there's no other enemies, just three codexes. But um, there's three of them. And they just take a really long time to kill, because every time you hit them, they split into two. So I think there's probably like five going on right now, or maybe we killed some of the clones already. Um, but it's... They've also started shooting us, which I didn't know they actually could do. Uh, and so we've actually taken some damage, we're in some trouble because all my recruits are so squishy. Um, and I'm honestly like worried that we're going to lose someone in this fight. Uh, but we have this optional objective that um, I'm looking at what Jake's options are here and I suddenly realize, oh my god, he can Skulljack. 
and Skulljack is my ultimate objective. So Skulljack a codex <laughs> is a brilliant video game sentence. Um, and that's my ultimate objective, and it has been for about four missions. I uh, most of the time I haven't been encountering codexes, or if we do, they just get annihilated in Overwatch Fire before I can do anything to them. Um, but on this, of all missions, the one where I'm really not sure if I'm even going to make it out alive, Jake, my one good troop, has the opportunity to Skulljack a codex. And as it happens, it's sort of not a bad idea anyway, because it's got a 70% chance to, to succeed, and if it succeeds, uh, then it just kills whatever you do it to. So he's only got, I don't know if he had any chance, to, uh, he can shoot those people I think, but I don't know if he had any chance to hit because they're on high ground and everything. Um, so skulljacking is actually not a bad idea, and I kind of want to get this thing done anyway, it sounds like a cool thing. He can choose which one to skulljack, uh, and that one would be better to take out but it would leave him exposed to the third one, so I think I decided to Skulljack the one on the roof. And Skulljacking is fucking cool if you haven't seen it, by the way. <laughs> so you get a hacking interface on your wrist while you're suspending someone by their neck. Uh, and you can pick two bonuses, but it um, doesn't really matter because... Um, the hack is guaranteed to work to access the avatar project, which is apparently why we're doing this. I didn't know that till I did it. Um, and now we've accessed the avatar project. But... <laughs> at this point, don't you think, oh, fuck. What now? Because we've just had two nasty fights. We've used most of our explosives on just the first group of enemies. We have no chance of surviving anything tough. And this is something I've never seen before. <laughs> and it has a purple face. And look how many fucking hit points it has. And it's got two um, layers of armor. We have nothing that can deal with armor, uh, except explosives, like I say. And uh, as you can see from the flashing red thing in the bottom right corner, a bunch of us have our weapons disabled by the codex spells. And uh, it takes uh, an action to reload before you can use them again. So this is awkward. <laughs> I can't totally remember how we deal with this. It seems improbable that we even got out of this. <laughs> um, but explosives seem like a good idea because that's the only thing that will shred armor that we have. And uh, also, she's on the second floor or first floor, depending on where you live. Um, and so she'll take fall damage if, she, if we blow up the floor beneath her. And if she also takes explosive damage that shreds her armor, that would be a good start to this fight. And I can't remember who does it. Probably not Claudia, right? Oh, so Claudia's got the. Um, spider suit, which she borrowed from my main sniper, Jen, uh, and that will enable her... I wouldn't go there, I would go... <laughs> I say I wouldn't do this. I did do this! This is me doing it! <laughs> um, I would have thought it would be better to go over to the left, or maybe she's not going to do it at all. Maybe we're going to see what else other people are going to do. I may skip through some of this because um, there's a lot of just sitting there thinking, and I didn't know I was going to... I actually didn't know I was being recorded this time because the highlight, whatever caught, made me hit the highlight button, hasn't happened yet. I think this might have been actually. Um, I realised that, you know, no one can shoot for shit, but Phil is at least a ranger. And um, that means he's got a sword, and the sword is a fair bet to just completely destroy these people, which is great. Um, he's not in a great position there, but he's, he's technically in cover from that other one. The other one could easily flank him on their turn, but who knows. Matt Castle, I think we're still thinking about how to deal with this. Really, the way to do it would be to get some explosives on them, which I must have a plan to do it. Oh, maybe Nika's going to do it. Nika's moved in position. Yep, she's going to throw a plasma grenade. Oh, it's perfect. Oh, yeah, and then the click didn't work. I was clicking and it just didn't do anything. So I had to, like, come out of the interface and go back into it. But then she threw it! <laughs> and it did show both layers of armor, and it fell. And that did some damage. How much damage? Three. Christ. And then it teleported. Fucking hell, yeah. <laughs> I've forgotten most of what happened in this mission. <laughs> so it's got like a... It looks like it's got um, an elder spirit like attached to it. And... We're kind of spoiled for choices as to who to shoot it. But um, it probably isn't going to stay still when we do. Good view, camera. <laughs> oh, it's Claudia. Oh yeah, as a sniper, she was in good position to do a huge amount of damage to it, so it got it actually down to significantly. These people are rookies, but they are using my sort of newly upgraded weapons. Um, and Nika is now, you would think, 
in a great position to finish her off because she can not only move for flank but also by do in doing so put herself in great cover and look at that can't miss can't miss Nika you can't miss <laughs> she did miss so now Matt Carter is going to have to come up and see if he can unfuck that situation and as it happens that counts as flanking which I wouldn't have thought but okay Jesus Christ he <laughs> really just destroys her and got rightly earned a promotion for that um, I think he gets promoted to Sniper. So we did manage to deal with that, and then Codex is still teleporting around, um, but I think if we don't see it, no we don't see it, Phil Savage just, just sorted them again. So after that fight, I'm going to pause this just for a second, Phil is now inside the building. He ran inside to cut up the Codexes with his sword. Everyone else stayed outside and had to deal with that horrible Avatar thing. Um, and our mission is to rescue this guy, not rescue, kill or capture this guy in the building. And since Phil was already there and he's an assault troop, he might as well uh, be the one to actually do that. The other thing, I think I already know this at this point, yeah. In the very top left there, you might have just glimpsed a health bar. I can actually go back. Yeah, there. Um, there are mutons outside. And I know this because I fired an intel grenade out there. And out there at the front, I think I moved my cursor, I don't know if you can see that, um, in the top left. Out there in the front is where our extraction zone is, and it's right in front of two mutons and a really nasty third enemy type that I just do not want to tangle with because they are brutal even for my A team, and my B team are not going to stand a chance. They literally just can't take out those two enemies. They're, they're, between them don't have the combined firepower to do it in the number of turns that we even have left, let alone the number of turns they can survive. Uh, so my plan is, have Phil sneak in, get this guy, I either kill him or or carry him and then sneak back out the way he came in rather than going out through the front door and try and just not alert those people at all and go all the way around the edge of the map which is tough in six turns but I, I also didn't know if there's anyone in this room so he had to pause by the door to actually open it and kind of scout that out but it looks like there isn't so it's clear for Phil to run in and uh, I actually decide that since carrying someone doesn't seem to really slow you down, maybe it does a bit, but it's not like it doesn't halve your movement speed or anything. Um, <laughs> he's got a very tempting option to sword him. I was very strongly considering that. The ladder that it's sort of indicating nearby um, is not a great option because if he goes up there, he's definitely going to activate the mutons. We're not in concealment, so if I see them, they see me. I mean, except for the intel grenade, which is what we've used. Uh, I think. I'm not sure what I'm doing there. Oh, I was alt tabbing out. Um, okay. I was seeing what other options people had to... I don't know what I was doing actually. Okay, so Phil's there, but he hasn't... Uh, he can't do anything this turn because he's right out of action, so I don't think anything else interesting happens. Uh, oh shit, this is a long one. Okay, so this must be... Yeah, so okay, here's the... Um, that's the enemy I'm scared of. I actually can't remember what it's called, but it's not a muton, it's a it's a chemical thing. <laughs> and it's got four layers of armor, so we're just not getting through that. I mean, if we threw all our explosives at them there without them moving, which is impossible, then we could maybe get through all their armor without running out, of, uh, at, you know, before we run out of explosives. Um, but I don't think we would even be able to take out all their hit points after that. This all seems rather boring. Oh yeah, so what I'm doing here is figuring out, um, I've rotated the camera which is super confusing, but uh, I'm figuring out how to get all my troops along this highway uh, so that they will get close to the exit zone without alerting the uh, mutons. And obviously Phil will have a longer route to take which is worrying me, but uh, my people can't help him, they can't make him go any faster so they might as well get as close to the exit as possible and then if it does all go to hell, we only lose Phil Savage and, you know, <laughs> he's new. <laughs> Lots and lots of deciding, lots and lots of placing people in very particular positions. Desperately hoping I don't wake up the mutons. My big debate was whether to go for the central reservation or whether to go all the way across the road and behind the bus stop and stuff. Uh, and I think I decided the central reservation was alright. Oh no, maybe not. And that's the end of my turn. The mutons are actually patrolling. Which is great news, because it means I would get a window of opportunity to get to the ex evac zone without alerting them. Because the evac zone is actually really close to them. So if they wander away from it sometimes, that, you know, in an ideal world, it's not impossible that I would be able to sneak in through that window of opportunity. Even though, once I'm out there, I wouldn't be able to see them. 
<laughs> Ever the humanitarian Phil. Heroically saves the VIP's life by smashing his face in with his rifle. And then... Picks him up. And it's just going to run out the way he came as best he can. Um, I'm trying to figure out whether it's best for him to run as far as he can or whether he should take cover. Um, but I think I decided to just make him run as far as he can <laughs> and he just kind of waddles. <laughs> so, then everyone else has to figure out how to best get close to the evac zone without alerting the mutons. The muttons. Okay, we missed something there. Aliens turn. They are apparently already in the building. I didn't know that. <laughs> and they sort of... Maybe they spotted Phil. I, I sort of thought maybe they just automatically alerted after you taken the hostage. Maybe they even saw that the hostage isn't there. That would be amazing. But I think probably they just sort of were close enough to Phil that they got eyes on him. So that's bad. There's the three enemies that my whole team can't deal with are all on Phil, and Phil can't fire back because he's carrying a VIP, and reinforcements are being called in on the evac zone. So my people who are hoping to avoid combat entirely are going to have enemies right in front of them. Um, Phil is basically completely fucked. He's facing three of the, the toughest enemies, and he can't do anything about them. Uh, even if he dropped the guy and ran, I don't think that would help, and that would also fail our mission. Uh, if he drops the guy, I'm also not sure if... Like, leaving behind it unconscious is no good. We'd have to actually kill him. So I decide, I'm just going to walk past him. <laughs> I'm just going to climb up to the roof, past all the mutons, and just leave the whole building. <laughs> through the Not through the front door, but through the front, at least. And uh, that, was, that was when I hit the highlight button, because I realised all of Phil's journey with this guy should be preserved on record, because it's so... It is dramatic, what's happening, but... The animation is so <laughs> slow and so kind of <laughs> like ungainly. It's just sort of pathetic yet yeah, brilliant. Okay, so the reinforcements have arrived now, and they were a robot and two soldiers. I did. I spent the whole turn like just setting everyone else up, forgetting about the mutons because we can't do anything about them really, and just having everybody be in Overwatch and ready to just rain down on these fuckers when they land. And they did land, and we did rain fire down on them, but we only killed one of them. I think only two people actually hit anything, um, and Claudia was the one to actually snipe that guy. So now we sort of have to deal with these guys. The problem is, that, I mean, the troops, we've already killed one and we can kill the other one easily enough, but the robot just has so much health and so much armor, and again, armor is our bane. But Jake, our one good guy, has Haywire Protocol. And that means he can, in theory, in fact, the reason I'm pausing at it here, I'm pausing in the game and um, the video, the reason I'm uh, deliberating here is that Jake can actually do Haywire Protocol, and he can do, um, uh, he's already done a Skulljack, but you can do something called Skull Mining or something, and it's using a Skulljack on any old troop, um, any officer or troop, and it, if it works, uh, in fact, even if it doesn't work, it automatically kills him. So he could kill that guy in one hit, and he can also hack the um, robot, and he can heal team members. The problem is, each of those things is technically only one action, and he has two actions, but I've done this before, and when I used Haywire, if you use it and you cancel out, it doesn't cost you anything at all. But if you use it and it does shut down the robot, it seems to end your turn. And it doesn't... Oh no, it totally does warn you about that, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've just realised that little icon. Uh, I'll go back for anyone who doesn't know. Uh, that icon down here, um, just to the right where it says Haywire Protocol, is a end turn icon. I, I keep wanting to go by the colour of the icons, because in Invisible Link, the icons are coloured by whether they cost an action or not, and these, um, like the reload icon there, doesn't end your turn, but that's blue, and an attack is also blue, and that does end your turn, so, who knows? I think they're just coloured by whether they're generic, or whether they're class-based, maybe? I could have tried to hack him to our side, which, you know, with him on our side, we could maybe take on the mutons, but actually... You know, obviously it's a massive risk, and the key thing is this thing has to be out of the picture. We can't deal with it, so it just has to be shut down. Shut it down for two turns, and we've got three turns left, so that's going to come up. <laughs> uh, I don't think I'm actually considering Matt running there. That would be ridiculous. 
someone's got to do something about that guy. Loads of people in position to actually shoot him. Oh, what do they do? Oh, Nika threw a grenade at him and the car. <laughs> Which is actually kind of a cool move. Uh, that was because we need to get rid of his armour. That was the key thing, and only grenades can do that. Um, in retrospect, that might have been a bit wasteful, but I was thinking that was the only enemy we actually have to deal with. Like, he's in our way, we have to kill him. Robot shut down. Mutons are scary, but we can't kill them, so there's no point in saving our munitions for it. And... <laughs> Matt Castle completely shreds that guy. You can see why he became a sniper with all these point-blank range kills. And Phil's dramatic escape continues. They have... Um, I'm pretty sure they have someone in Overwatch. So he can actually get nearly to the evac zone, so close. Um, and if he's not going to go to the evac zone, he might as well wait in heavy cover there, which would be great. But one of the mutons is on Overwatch. And if I haven't dealt with that already, I'm now thinking about how to deal with that. Yeah. So my logic is, Phil is actually super important, and he has the VIP on him. And if he gets shot, I think the VIP will probably survive, and then we'd have to have someone else go out into the line of fire and pick him up, and that's just not going to happen. So... I don't want Phil to die, but one of the mutons is in Overwatch, so I'm going to get Mike Cook as our um, the only person who's got both armor and full health to just run out into the line of fire. He wants to go in that direction anyway. Oh no, sorry, he's going to fire a, a rocket launcher. He's got a, a wrist-mounted rocket launcher on his like heavy suit, and if you happen to know from previous experience, if you um, uh, hit someone with an explosion. Maybe if you just hit them at all, it cancels the overwatch. The other thing I'm thinking about is uh, if he's going to do that, he might as well move first. And I think I do let him move first. And then he's... I was really worried he wouldn't have a, a line of sight to them after he moved, but he does. <laughs> it's tricky. Oh yeah, and then look at this. Warning friendly fire. And you might think, well, what friendly fire? And it's the VAP. The VAP is highlighted as being in the blast radius of that. And I'm sorry, but no, that is false. Maybe his original location is in that blast radius, but that shouldn't really count. Um, anyway, it's not an actual problem, because I, after I cancel, I just do it again, and this time it doesn't complain. <laughs> That's a pretty fucking good shot, actually. I think it... Did it even hit the unseen one? Yeah, it did. So it shredded all of the armor on the mutons, seriously hurt both of them, and partially shredded the armor on the, the main thing. You might be thinking we could take those guys out, perhaps. The okay, problem is that wobble. we can't get close. And we only have three turns to leave. We have to be gone in three turns' time. All of us. Every single person. Anyone who's not is lost. So it's not just about getting the objective out. It's about all of us reaching the evac zone. And uh, that is a tall order if you're going to stop and fight. So we basically... All I focus on is just getting everyone there as quickly as possible. Hopefully without dying. And I think we're figuring out... Oh, Claudia can actually shoot one of those mutons. Um, I don't think I actually decided to do that, though, because, like I say, the time limit is our biggest enemy here. So, robot shut down for that turn. That's nice. What are the mutons going to do? Okay, the, the big thing there went into Overwatch. That's significant, because that thing does at least 10 damage if it hits, which I think that would kill anyone except Jake. Maybe not Mike. This is a scary moment. <laughs> but luckily it misses. They must be so mad at Phil. Just this guy in a baseball cap just walks in, picks up the VIP and just strolls up, or climbs up the ladder, jumps off their roof and just walks to the evac zone and no one can hit him. <laughs> Every time someone thinks they have a shot on him, they get blown up or they miss. So I think, again, the age-old dilemma of, like, do you just run, or do you try and do some damage? Let's find out. Oh yeah, this, no, this, sorry. Um, Muton is in, two Mutons, I think, are in Overwatch. And so, I have the same problem again, where Phil survived that swipe attack, but he shouldn't run to the objective, because uh, I think you can actually see, there's an eye icon on that one. Yeah, and on that one. So, if you can't see my cursor, you won't be able to spot it, but uh, both the Mutons are in Overwatch. Sorry, the Muton and the nasty thing, the yellow thing are in Overwatch. So that's a deadly amount of fire, and I don't want Phil to take it, and I kind of don't mind as much if Mike takes it, partly because he can endure it better. Uh, actually, they've got the same amount of armor, but um, obviously Phil's, gonna, Phil's in the worst situation. So if Mike can draw some of the fire... Also, Mike is further away, so they're less likely to hit him. And sure enough, one miss, 
And this is the scary one. And it also misses. So Mike, if I ever give Mike a nickname, it's going to be something to do with mis like evading shots. Maybe Dodger. So, you can see there's like a little cut every now and then in the video and it carries on exactly from where it left off. That's because there are so many things in this match that maybe hit the highlight button that the series of highlights may more or less run into each other. But there is also a lot of manoeuvring and a lot of thinking about how do I get my people out because it's really coming down to it now. Two turns. It's, it's looking good for most of them. Most of them are uh, well in. And look, Phil can just do it. The Overwatch is used up. There's no threat to him. He can just literally waddle to the evac zone. And he's going to do it. He's just going to stroll out. All those mutons are just sitting there thinking, Fuck! How did we let this happen? <laughs> look, he's just grabbing hold of a rope and just lifting off into the sky and we're just standing there like assholes. <laughs> All those mutons are fired from whatever positions they hold in the alien hierarchy. I love this, by the way. The thing in the centre, the um, rotating hologram, is showing um, Olivia Wild Thing White um, and Major Alexander and is that... yeah, that's Major Jen Martin. Uh, kill zone. Who is my proper sniper. And... Claudia here is borrowing her suit and her sniper rifle, actually. So, if any of these guys do die, there's a double whammy of not only do I lose that person, but also lose all the equipment for my best person, because I, all of them borrowed the equipment of the A-Team. The A-Team are just sitting there with nothing, and uh, they lent all of their, like, really personalised rifles. I don't know if you ever see him, but... Um, I don't know if you ever see a close-up of him, but... Uh, I guess it's... Uh, is it Phil? I think Phil is the ranger, yeah, he's borrowing Trin's shotgun. Trin has a shotgun called Fren Friendship, which is purple, and it's really obvious that he's borrowed it from somebody because all of the rest of his garb is like very serious and military and he's holding this bright purple shotgun. It's great. Actually, you can probably see that at the start of the video. I won't rewind now, but... Um. Oh, there he is. Oh no, that's Jake, who has a blue rifle, which is very different. Uh, Okay, so Jake and Nika have both got to run, but there's only one good spot of cover. One is closer to the evac zone, and then there's other spots of cover further back. That car is, is okay cover, but neither of them can afford to be out in the open, because that robot is about to wake up, so that robot can just fuck with them completely. Um, and Jake is not on full health, and he doesn't have time to heal. He's got loads of heals left, but if he stops to heal, he may not make it at all. So this is the, like, the critical decision. Is, do I get Nika out, or do I get Jake out? and um, or to this better spot of cover I mean, I'm mean, i pretty sure I can get them both out but I give Nika priority because she's uh, kind of needs the cover more and then Jake, if he has to hang back he can heal himself at least pretty sure I decided the car's the best cover, yep now the heavy mech wakes up and now it gets fucking serious Jake's got two turns to get to that evac zone do you think that's doable? Ah, heavy thing went into Overwatch. Is this Muton going to do it as well? No, he's going to fire. Oh shit! Oh, and he hit Jake. Oh, Jake's not in a good way. And this guy's going to smash Claudia. Oh god. I actually thought she was dead because she dropped to the ground. Did 8 damage and stunned her. Um, and stunned seems to mean that on your next turn you only get one move. And he's just completely flanked Nika and destroyed her cover. And said it was a critical hit, but only did three damage, which is actually pretty amazing. That ability is is not a big damage dealer because it's fucking um, brutal in every other respect. You know, he can fire it from a huge range. It destroys all cover in a radius. It can hit multiple enemies. Um, it's horrible. So at least Nika is alive. And Claudia is very nearly dead, but look, she can just fucking walk to the evac zone. I don't actually know what... Oh, because someone's in... Uh, someone is in Overwatch. And so we might want Mike to do his trick again of just <laughs> luring everyone out. Uh, this is a mistake, actually. I think I've selected Mike, but I haven't. I've selected Matt. <laughs> and Armoured Mike would be a great person to distract everyone here. But instead, sending unarmoured Matt Castle out. And I haven't noticed yet. And I'm not going to notice. Thank <laughs> you. 
There's the Overwatch. And I missed. <laughs> that was just pure luck. Oh yeah, I had him do the move in two steps so that... Um, I think it was to make his path taken further away from them so that when they did take the Overwatch shot it would be more likely to miss. And I guess it paid off. And then he just evacs out. He's got no moves left. So... Uh, what's the situation now? A bit I don't seem to have a recording of is that Mike Cook uh, wherever the hell he was, I don't actually know where he, I'd left him. Uh, he went to the evac zone and he had a move left, so he's standing in the evac zone and he's able to actually shoot. Uh, and there's a mutant right next to him, which you can see down here. Um, and I had to alt tab out and ask Twitter if I shoot this guy, can I still use the evac action? Because the evac thing doesn't take an action, but can you do it if you've actually ended your turn? Because shooting ends your turn. Uh, so like a sort of hard and fast rule and other things, there are certain things to do with bodies that are supposed to be free but actually if you've ended your turn you can't do them um, if you fired you can't do them and uh, so I was really worried about that but if he could do it he could make it right for Jake because Nika has got out um, in fact everyone has got out except for Jake and Jake's still stuck by that fucking car and we've got one turn and the full horror of the situation is very slowly dawning on me. I was trying to figure out for a while, does that mean I've got one turn after this? Or does that mean this is my one turn? Because if you look at the radius that he can move, he can't get there. When I moved into that car, it seemed totally doable. It said two turns, right? So two turns from that car, easy. But that was that turn. Two was referring to the turn I was on. And now one is referring to the turn I'm on. I.e. this is the last turn. I.e. Jake is fucked. There's no way out. There's really nothing he can do here, and uh, I spent a long time thinking about this. How long is this? Wait, this is 19 minutes. That can't be right. Um, and I couldn't see... He can't get to the evac zone. He obviously can't... I mean, he can't kill all the people, but uh, even if he could, it wouldn't make any difference. He'd still be captured. Um, in fact, there's infinite uh, forces, I think. They just keep reinforcing. So, the my cursor wibbling there was debating should he go, uh, should he run as far away as he can into light cover and hope they don't chase him all the way or should he go into heavy cover and if he does that he's still got one action left. And why, why do I care at all if he's lost for sure? Well, if the turn limit expires and he's alive he gets captured. If he fights them and dies he's dead completely forever. Uh, even if he sort of like is incapacitated and bleeding out, he's dead. Uh, so, I'm trying to get him captured. <laughs> it was a really weird, horrible moment where I realised like this guy is properly doomed. He can't make it. Let's just go back to the here. He can't make it to the evac zone at all. And uh, I'm not sure why it's not showing the white, the yellow line there. Um, he is either dead or captured and captured is the better of those two because captured one day you can get them back possibly we got Claudia back she's the only one of the first four who got captured that we did get back uh, Jake would be a much more important one to get back because he's a corporal or is he corporal? captain? captain um, and he's got loads of cool abilities and Money. we don't Money. just respect him but we can't do it so I send him to heavy cover I have him I nearly clicked the wrong ability that's not the one I want that doesn't heal you <laughs> you want healing because he's only on five health and if he can just toughen himself up and be in heavy cover, maybe he can at least survive the turn. So, he's 7, which is amazing. I didn't, I didn't think it would heal that much. Uh, so he's at nearly full health, he's in heavy cover, but he's against three... Actually, no, only... Yeah, three enemies. Uh, only two of the mutons, because Mike cleverly killed one of them. But this thing is a serious danger. This thing is obviously a serious danger. And... That thing went into Overwatch, which is great, because I don't have another turn, so he's never going to get to fire that shot. <laughs> But here we go with the fucking robot. I did 5 damage. See, that wasn't a crit and did 5 damage. I don't know why I only did 3 to Nika. And that's it. That's the end of the turn. Time has expired. No one died. Soldiers killed 0. No one dies on my watch. They just get captured. <laughs> so that's it. Thanks for watching.